So I'm here today with my good friend Jane Beachy. Jane, why don't you give us a description of where we're at and why we're here today? Well, we're at Kahuku Training Area. I work for the Oahu Army Natural Resources Program, and we are tasked with doing endangered species man management and, um, I guess, training mitigation for the Army. So part of our work involves a lot of invasive species control because we need to improve habitat for our endangered species and also to prevent new weeds from becoming established in the training ranges. Um, some of the weeds that we deal with in Kahuku include uh, strawberry guava, uh, pimenta dioica, which is allspice, haulikoa, and grevillea robusta, and there's just a whole suite of other ones as well. We spend a lot of time conducting weed control here. Um, probably 90% of our effort in Kahuku is invasive species wow, management. Wow, that's a lot. And, yeah. I, and I, if, I, if I'm right, a lot of it is, is handwork, a lot of hack and squirt Definitely. methods. Definitely. It's all manual and chemical um, kind of hand application. Sure, and so it takes a lot of energy and like you said a lot of resources, mm -hmm. which is why I'm here today. Today we're going to try out the new technology, herbicide ballistic technology, and behind us we're going to demonstrate an application on Gravalia robusta. It looks like we're looking at a tree that's what, about 10 meters tall, yeah? Yeah. And about 3 meters wide we're saying, so we're going to assume that we have a 30 square meter area that we'll be treating. And according to my calculations, a proper application volume that would be applied with our HBT projectiles is about five projectiles per square meter. So we'll be targeting 150 projectiles on this tree today and identify if a Mazapir is effective in controlling this particular species. So as I had indicated earlier, this Gravalia is about 30 square meters for canopy and our approach today is to get uniform coverage with HBT using this A5 Tipman and our effective range is about 30 meters which is where we paste off from and the approach I'm going to use today is I want, first I want to make sure I get a hit on the first shot so I'll target first in the center and then I'll use a zigzag pattern to cover the rest of the canopy with the projectiles. So for, for a 30 square meter area we're going to project about 150 projectiles. That's about one pod worth, so that's an easy calculation for us. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up. We're ready to go. Okay, we're ready to administer the projectiles to the Gravalia, so I'm going to remove the barrel condom, get loaded up here. Safety is off. Aiming for the center. Hit. So I'm looking at a frond of the Gravalia that we just recently treated. This is a lower branch and what we're noticing is uh, we had really good distribution of the chemical on impact, um, suggesting that the projectile when it hits a branch or a leaf, we had nice spreading pattern. It looks like with the fluid nature of the, of the fill, we get about a half to, to one meter in diameter in its spray pattern. Regardless on this particular branch, and it won't show up on this uh, uh, clip here, but we, what we're seeing is good spreading pattern of the chemical and also we're noticing that the chemical is already drying. We just treated this about 10 minutes ago and so we're seeing already that the herbicide is penetrating into the frond. And that has very much to do with the components of this fill. We have a mazapir at only 5% but the 95% of it is methylated seed oil. And that seed oil is really compatible with the waxy cuticle that allows for good penetration. And imazapir, being a highly systemic chemical, is a real useful um, application in this regard so that once it penetrates into this frond, can it move to other parts of the plant and start to act on the uh, controlling the weed. So even with the highly accurate targeting of this Gravalia, we were picking up non-target herbicide 
spotting within a four meter range. And a lot of the plants that were treated included strawberry guava. Here you'll see a leaf with the herbicide pattern that's picking up. And then also uh, a native vine, cocculus, that was treated with the herbicide as well. This is on the ground. And so we'll be able to make observations and look for any halo effect that might occur within this target plant to identify the non-target injury that could potentially occur with this type of application. And hopefully with that type of information we can start to formulate a better strategy for application. In other words, do we really need full coverage or can we target specific pot spots that uh, reduce our non-target uh, injury? So around the base of the tree where we applied HBT, we're finding a lot of these shells here. And some people might worry about are we contaminating the environment or polluting it with these shells lying around everywhere? Well, these shells are made of a polysaccharide mix, and so by tomorrow, these things won't even exist. They're water soluble and melt into the ground. And of course, also because it's based off of a recreational use, they're actually non toxic, so they have no impact on the environment whatsoever. All right, so we're going to try to hit another Schifflera actinophylla here. It's about 30 meters away from me and the canopy area is about 20 meters squared and we've got 100 balls in the hopper so we're going to try to paint the entire tree um, pretty thoroughly. We also have a little bit of a gusty kind of headwind coming in and uh, that'll be another factor in how well the balls fly. All right, here we go. saying it's about 30 meter distance and in front of us is a uh, medium to light vegetation but if you were to use your standard approach what would that be so normally for a standard approach we would hike over to the Schifflera and uh, if this vegetation isn't so bad but in other areas it can be quite thick yeah then I would have to clear around the base of the tree mm -hmm. and get out my hatchet and girdle the base of the tree and then apply probably Garlon 4 and force your crop oil to the base Got it. so that would uh, depending on what the tree trunk looks like and how convoluted it is it could probably take I would imagine five to ten minutes to go hike over tree to tree and come back and then move to the next and tree. then to move on to the next tree so here we're going to make an HBT application with Shinus terbanthifolius we also see an Ardesia elliptica uh, patch in there so we're going to kill two birds with one stone hopefully uh, pun definitely intended I got the safety off taking aim one two three four five 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so we're now working with the barrel cam. We're going to be doing some HBT applications on Schifflura. Next tree. 